In this GCSE IGCSE video, we're going to be looking at the limiting factors which affect photosynthesis and how we can actually investigate them by carrying out an experiment. So we'll actually be looking at the experimental setup. So just to begin with, we'll quickly touch on what those limiting factors are. Remember, because we're looking at photosynthesis, remember our summary equation is carbon dioxide plus water forms glucose plus oxygen. Now hopefully you can see from the equation that one of the first obvious limiting factors is carbon dioxide. So if there are low levels of carbon dioxide, you'll find that this will limit how much photosynthesis takes place. Additionally, you have temperature being a limiting factor, so very low temperatures will limit photosynthesis. You'll see an increase in photosynthesis as the temperature increases up until a point. And then lastly, light intensity, and that's, that makes sense because remember, the equation above relies on light energy. So low light intensity will certainly limit the rate of photosynthesis. So if I now highlight these various limiting factors, temperature, light intensity and carbon dioxide, because we're scientists, we like to experimentally investigate how these limiting factors affect photosynthesis and this is what this video is really about, how we're actually going to go about doing that. Now, if you've been following me for a while, you'll know that I'm obsessed with the variables layout. So let's have a look at what that actually means. Because when you use the variables layout, it actually helps plan your experiment for you. So remember, the first variable we need to be aware of is the independent variable. And this is the factor that you're going to change. So what am I going to change about my experiment? And notice there should only be one factor. You can't go altering lots of different factors at the same time because then it's impossible to work out what caused what effect. And because we're looking at limiting factors, so what factors are we going to change? Well, we could choose to change the temperature, we could choose to change the light intensity, and finally we could choose to change the carbon dioxide levels. And remember, you should choose a sensible range of independent variables. So for temperature, you could go up in five degrees Celsius increments. Just make sure you pick something sensible here. The next thing you want to look at is the dependent variable. Now this is the factor that you measure. And this needs to be something that you physically measure. So you can't just physically measure the rate of photosynthesis. So although we're interested in how temperature, light intensity or carbon dioxide affect photosynthesis, you can't just go and measure the rate of photosynthesis. But what you can do, if we look back at the equation, is look at what the products of photosynthesis are, which is glucose and oxygen. Now it's going to be hard to measure how much glucose is produced, but oxygen is a gas. It's a byproduct released in photosynthesis. So if there was a way of measuring how much oxygen was released, then you'd have a way of working out how much photosynthesis had taken place. So in the case of limiting factors in photosynthesis, what we're going to be measuring is the volume of oxygen released in a specific time frame because you can't compare one minutes worth of collection with 10, that would be ridiculous. So let's say the volume of oxygen released in a minute, and how am I going to measure that volume of oxygen? Well, you might have seen more simple experiments will count oxygen bubbles. The more accurate way of doing that would be to use a gas syringe. And then lastly, our control variables. Notice these are factors which you keep the same. And you want at least three here, in case some of them are slightly dodgy. So thinking about what would be sensible here, well, if we were to investigate how temperature affects the rate of photosynthesis, clearly it's important that we use the same light intensity and carbon dioxide levels. And this is something you can actually control using sodium hydrogen carbonate, which is a substance you add to provide carbon dioxide to a water plant, and you can control how much of that you add. The light intensity also needs to be controlled if you're investigating temperature. So that could be using a 40 watt bulb and make sure it's held the same distance away each time. The other important things we need to keep the same is the plant species. And we tend to use pondweed known as Elodea in these experiments. How much of the pondweed you have is also going to be important. If you have a much longer length for some experiments, clearly they're going to be photosynthesizing more. So maybe five centimeters. And so as you can see, I've provided at least four control variables. I'm pretty confident in all of those, and I know that it's gonna enable me to carry out a really good experiment. So now let's actually draw a diagram and see what sort of apparatus you'd need. I'm still going to be looking at temperature and its effect on photosynthesis. 
So here's a really roughly drawn experimental setup showing the apparatus we'd need to investigate the effects of temperature on the rate of photosynthesis in case, amazingly, you don't understand what some of these things are. Here's your light source, which remember I told you had a 40 watt bulb in it, held at 10 centimeters away. Here's a thermometer for checking the temperature. How are we going to alter the temperature? Well, using a hot plate, which you can control the temperature of. You can see this experiment's being carried out at 25 degrees Celsius. We've got pondweed, which means we need water. The pondweed is this strange looking thing at the bottom of the funnel. And then because I'm really bad at drawing gas syringes, I'm just going to be counting oxygen bubbles. Remember, I chose a time frame of one minute. There's also going to be a source of sodium hydrogen carbonate. Remember, that's our source of carbon dioxide. And we need to add the same amount each time in this particular experiment. And then lastly, remember that we need a stop clock in order to time one minute. Now, if you were to alter a different factor, so if you were to look at how the carbon dioxide concentration affects the rate of photosynthesis, you obviously wouldn't need a hot plate this time. You would alter the carbon dioxide concentration by altering the mass of sodium hydrogen carbonate that you added. And then lastly, if you were interested in how light intensity affected the rate of photosynthesis, you could simply move that lamp 10 centimetres away, 20 centimetres away, 30 centimetres away, but just making sure that the temperature and carbon dioxide levels remain constant so that you only have one independent variable